Hello, and welcome to the One Life Church Devotional Series. We cover the entire Bible in 20 months. So today's chapters are 1 Kings 22, and we start a new book of the Bible, 2 Kings, where we follow the fortunes of the two kings of Israel, King Jehoshaphat in the southern kingdom and King Ahab of the northern kingdom. King Jehoshaphat, one of the best kings Israel's ever had. King Ahab, one of the worst, married to the wicked queen Jezebel. Now, at the end of the reading of these two chapters, I ask myself these questions. What is the role of prophets in your life? When I mean a prophet, I mean someone who will speak the word of God, who will speak honestly, uh, unafraid, and he will challenge you. Do you have those sort of people in your life? You should. People who will speak honest, speak the word of God, and not afraid to tell you the truth. If you don't have people like that in your life, uh, if you've got like an echo chamber just telling you what you want to hear, you're on, on quite dangerous ground. And how do you respond when they speak? When you know God has spoken through somebody, challenged you about a fault that you have or a pattern of life that you're going on or a perilous course of action that you're about to embark on. And then the other thing I ask myself is, how do you work with ungodly people? Because what we have here are these two kings. And at the beginning of this chapter, Jehoshaphat goes to visit King Ahab. Now, King Ahab's worst king ever. King Jehoshaphat, brilliant guy, followed God wholeheartedly. First time we see these two kingdoms coming together. We see King Jehoshaphat sitting on his throne there. He had gone to visit um, King Ahab in Samaria at the city gate, dressed in his regalia. Right next to him, in the throne next to him, was King Ahab. You had these two kings of Israel, the good and the bad, sitting next to each other, discussing the joining of Israel. It never happened before. You see, what you've got is a godly man, irrespective of what's happening on the other side of the fence, being able to bring peace, being able to bring God, being able to bring faith into the environment. God might have put you in a marriage like that. Or you might find yourself in a marriage like that. God might have put you in a business like that. You might find yourself in a situation like that. How do you walk with ungodly people, keeping your, your, your path straight, um, pointing them to God? Well, Joshua, that's a great example. He says to Ahab, when they're busy discussing war, he says, listen, you should ask God. So Ahab says, um, well, you know, how do you, how do, you do that? He said, he called a whole bunch of prophets. Uh, Joshua is not very impressed with these prophets. And he says, haven't you got any prophet here who follows God? So he says, well, there's this guy, um, you know, and uh, Micaiah, I don't, I don't like him. I hate him because he always prophesies bad about me. So I says, bring him. So this new prophet arrives. And there he's standing between the two kings and says, now give us your verdict. Should we go to war or shouldn't we? You see, Joshua had said, my people, your people, my horses, your people. I'll go to war with you, buddy. But we've got to hear God. The prophet says, go to war. Ahab says, must be a catch. You, always prophesying bad things about me, telling me, you agree with my prophets? He says, listen, God showed me. Israel hasn't even got a king, man. They're like sheep without a shepherd. He turns to Joshua and says, I told you this guy. He's always saying bad things about me. He says, listen, I saw God having a discussion in his throne room saying, how are we going to get Ahab onto the battlefield? And a deceiving spirit says, I'm going to come and deceive the prophets. And he'll go into the field thinking he's going to win his victory and he's going to die there. Well, Ahab is so cross. He locks him up, puts him away. He says, don't let him out of jail until I come back from the battle that he says I'm going to die in. And then he says to Jehoshaphat, can you believe this? Like, why don't you go into battle in your robes? You can be like bait. <laughs> can you believe this guy? You can be like bait. They'll go after you. I'll go in disguise. I'll go fight in disguise and I'll be safe. You can't run from God. Ask Jonah, you can't deceive God. A stray arrow hits Ahab in between his armor and he bleeds out at sunset. Dogs lick up his blood, it says, while they were cleaning his chariot. You can't mock God like that. Anyway, his son goes onto the throne, Ahaziah, and he's as bad as his old man. He also has an accident, hurts himself, and then again, he follows the way of his dad. He goes to ask prophets of Baal, am I going to live or not? God says to Elijah the Tishbite, the prophet, catch those envoys on the way and tell that king. Because he didn't inquire of the Lord, because he went out after the Baals, he's going to die in his bed. He won't get off that bed. Isaiah is mad. He's as mad as his dad was. But he doesn't plan to lock this prophet up. He plans to kill him. So he says, 
50 soldiers to go take him out. Out of heaven comes fire to protect Elijah. Whether it was a lightning strike, what we don't know. But these soldiers, they die. Ahaziah uh, sends out another envoy. Those 50 soldiers die. The third battalion comes out and says, please have mercy on us. We'd like, we just, we just messengers. Elijah says, okay, I'm coming with you. He goes to the king and he says, listen, you are not getting off your sickbed because you did not follow God. And the guy dies. What a story. Godly King Jehoshaphat having to coexist with these ungodly Ahab and Ahaziah. And, and yet somehow manages to bring peace. Manages, we called to follow the Prince of Peace and to follow him wholeheartedly. Huge challenge in this text for living in a world that's gone crazy.